Once you've identified your niche, it's time for you to create a plan. Why you need a plan? There's a lot of reasons and it might be obvious, but you're nearly twice as likely to succeed than those who don't have a plan. So two investors or two business owners who start their business or start investing, the person with the plan written down that they can reference and look at is twice as likely to succeed. And that's because they've by having a plan they've actually sat down and thought through all of the different parts of the business whereas the other person probably missed something and wasn't able to adjust those things before investing the money 49 percent more likely to grow than those without a plan so people who don't have a plan stagnate they get to a point to a level where they earn a certain amount of money and then they stop growing now here's the key one for real estate you're twice as likely to get investment capital. Now with a business, you're looking for somebody to take part ownership of your business, uh, give you some money, and then help you grow. But with real estate, it's project to project. If you have a plan and you can convey that plan to other people, they're twice as likely to put that money down on that property so that you can get more property. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the number two where you're more likely to grow. If you can get more capital, you can do more deals. And again, it's more growth potential than those without a plan. So what is an investing plan? Well, it's similar to a business plan, except for you're not really setting up a business where you make a product or provide a service. Uh, so it has to be a little bit different. But in a sense, it's still a written document that describes in detail how you're going to achieve your goals. And it's written from a marketing, financial, and operational viewpoint. So the thing is you need to know your goals. You need to know how you're going to market. You're going to need to know the money side of things and how you're going to operate, how you're going to maintain your properties or renovate them if renovations are necessary. So with the minimum criteria that you need in your investing plan is your goals and criteria for buying property. So you need to know exactly how much money you want to earn. That's your goal. Are you trying to earn $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month? When do you want to retire? Five years, 10 years, 15 years? You need to know those goals so that you can write it down. Then you can start to work your way into uh, the plan to get you there. And then the criteria for each property. So how much do you want each property to earn you each month? $200, $300, or are you looking for a certain rate of return, 10%, 15%, whatever percent? What's the criteria? Are you looking for A-type properties in you know, what type of neighborhood, C neighborhoods, B neighborhoods? You need to start establishing this criteria to see how it fits into your goals, which I kind of already went on to number two, the market area and property class. So how your goals if your goal is to earn a lot of money and have very little effort involved you may want to focus on a and b type properties because c and d properties require a lot of effort if your goal is to earn as much money as possible and put a lot of effort in you might focus on the lower c and d type properties because you want to put your time in to earn more money and accept that risk so only you know what your goals are and then what type of property in the market area fits into those goals Another important piece for you to think about is how you plan to find deals. Now I'm going to talk about a lot of different ways that you can find real estate deals uh, in, an, in another section after this, but you need to start writing this down into your, into your plan. Are you going to uh, be paying for marketing materials? Are you going to be advertising online? Do you plan on using the MLS, a realtor? What are you looking for and how do you plan on finding those deals? Now it's important you write this down so you can start developing that plan. If it's just talking to a real estate agent, having them send you deals, you don't need to think about it too much. But if you plan on marketing, sending mailing letters or using the internet, you need to really plan this out because that costs money and you don't want to spend that money without having a plan in place. Now here's an important one. How will you finance your deals? Do you have private money? Are you getting a mortgage? Is that mortgage conventional? 
VA or FHA or some other type of loan? Are you going to be using hard money or private money? Are you going to be partnering with somebody or do you have a group of partners that are going to be working on this? These are all pieces you need to think about beforehand. You can't just go start making offers on properties. You need to know how you're going to close on those deals. Which leads into the next, you need to exit plan. So if you're going to use short term financing to purchase a rental property, you need to have a plan in place to refinance that property or sell it. So I obviously don't uh, suggest flipping properties, which would be short term sale. I like to maintain the properties for long term rental income and appreciation. So if you do use short term capital, such as a partner investor or private money, you need to have a plan to refinance into a more traditional um, type of mortgage in order to be able to get them paid off and keep the property. So you need an exit plan if applicable. You also need a property management plan. Are you going to be managing the properties or are you going to be hiring a property manager? If you're going to hire a property manager, what's the criteria? If you're going to do it yourself, what are your processes? How do you plan on finding tenants? How do you market your property? What happens if they don't pay you? What's your plan for evictions? Uh, so on and so forth. You need to establish a property management plan or have the criteria for your property manager in place. Now there's a lot more you can get into with your investing plan and it can be as detailed as you want it to be. It can be dozens of pages long or it can be a five or six page long document. The key though is that you hit the minimum criteria and then anything else that's applicable to your niche. And then certain areas you might need to flesh out a little bit more. Say you didn't think about property management, maybe you go into a little bit more detail and really think it through now while you're working through your plan. Other areas, maybe you already, maybe you're a real estate agent, you already know how you're going to find your properties and you already know the criteria for it. You can gloss over that a little bit and focus on the other areas. The key is to flesh out the weak areas of your plan, focus on them so you're less likely to fail.